Uh, okay, so yeah, I have been tasked with the last talk of the day when everyone wants to kind of sleep and other things before the meal, so I'll see what I can do. So this is talking about the uh, contributions to MariaDB Surfer and normally I do a whole talk on how our contributions happen and where they come from and things like that. It's going to be a little bit different this time, so we're going to be talking about contributions over 2023 and how we can do things better in the future. So, uh, first of all, I want to talk about how we gather metrics for contributions. Um, at the moment, we use a modified version of uh, Git DM, Git Data Miner, that uh, is used to generate metrics for the Linux kernel project. Uh, our version has been modified so it works a little bit better with Ruby Surface source code and added a few features that I'll, I'll talk about further on. Uh, we also have a bunch of scripts that kind of pass through GitHub's pull requests and generates a load of metrics on those, such as kind of open, closed, merge, um, generous reports, all sorts of stuff like that. And this is all open source, so if you go to uh, github.com slash mariedb slash metrics, I think it is, you'll be able to find all the tools to do this and uh, I create quarterly snapshots of uh, data from this. You'll be able to find them as well. So what happened in 2023? Uh, we generated more metrics uh, to do lots of things with numbers. We got some new sponsors. Uh, there were some new contributing organizations. There was a very big boost in door requests towards the end of the year, which I'll talk about. And we kind of implemented some new review processes which are starting to come in. So for the more metrics side of things, um, in Git Data Miner, uh, we added a bunch more projects to watch the metrics for, such as uh, ReadyB Docker, which is kind of self-explanatory. ReadyB Kernel is for the Jupyter Kernel uh, for ReadyB, so if you use Jupyter Notebook, mm -hmm. there is a plugin for ReadyB for that. And Connector C, which um, is part of MariaDB server, even though it's separate, if that makes sense. Uh, so we generate metrics for those. Um, for pull requests, there's a whole bunch of new metrics, so it's time for first meaningful response. Now, what we mean by that is, uh, say a pull request has been opened, um, it is the time between it being opened and the first comment or review by someone who wasn't the original author of that and who is uh, part of the team who can uh, merge code. So that is defined as a meaningful response here because it seems very hard to think to define in any way. Um, we also monitor things like pull requests that have been self-closed. So that means pull requests that have been opened, there have been no real comments on them, and then suddenly they've been merged by the same person, uh, which is never a good thing, and we need to eliminate that from happening, but what if it does happen? Um, there's also uh, reports that are generated which, says, uh, which list PRs that require attention, so the uh, most important one is the pull requests that have not had any comments on them for X number of days, and they can sort that. So we have got a couple of pull requests that have not had comments for over a thousand days at the moment. Um, so it's my job to kill those, and uh, that's not happened. But <laughs> we, we it's something we need to work on. Then there is a prototype of a new uh, reporting tool called WhoTouch, and that uh, blanket goes through the code base looking for um, who owns and has worked on certain areas of code base. So if you say, I want to know everyone who has touched the Win32 code, it actually will go through, find all the box of code that is Win32 and go through the history of that uh, code and figure out who worked on it, who made the changes, etc. So there's a prototype of that available right now. There's some work I'm doing on, doing on it right now to do lines of code instead of just commit numbers and things like that. But, so we got all of this happened last year. We got some new sponsorships. Uh, Amazon, we've talked about a lot. We also had Team Blue and Wikimedia coming as new sponsors on the Silver Tier, I believe, um, which uh, is also really good. We've had some new contributing organizations. All of these organizations were first-time contributors in the last year. 
um, Alibaba is actually a really good one to call out here because they contributed some new features and they're still contributing even more features for replication. And uh, in particular, they're really good at uh, creating test cases and everything with their pull requests. So there wasn't actually a lot to do apart from tweaking the naming of a few things and things like that. There wasn't actually a lot of work we had to do for their, their pull requests. A lot of these are just small changes, though, that, um, that are coming from a lot of these uh, companies. But hopefully, we've got more soon. We also have, um, I'm not on this list yet, but coming soon is Tencent. We've been working with them on some things they want to contribute, but they haven't actually landed yet. Um, this graph is going to be very hard to see on the screen, but it's very hard to actually represent this data in any other way. So this is the pull requests uh, week by week. Uh, so the blue line is new incoming pull requests. The uh, yellow, I believe, is merged and is cropped, so I can't even see that. And uh, orange is closed without merge. <laughs> So um, the problem happened at the end of the year here, where we well, it was a good and bad thing. We suddenly went from kind of an average of about 10 more requests a week to an average of about 25 a week. Uh, so it's a good problem to have. And uh, as far as I can tell, it's because MariaDB PLC just suddenly started using pull requests, which is excellent. That's what we want to see. Yep. Can you explain the legend? I can't keep that. Yeah, so the blue line, that's uh, open, new open pull requests for that week. Uh, the orange is merged pull requests for that week. And red is closed pull requests that haven't been merged. Do, do you take into account when we close something but still haven't used the code, just say... Do you not take into account that because it's just getting the metrics from GitHub's pull request stream. So uh, if you close it outside, then it will count as a close. Um, which really we should be using pull requests properly anyway, but, um, but yeah, um, actually this high trend continues into the new year as well, so this, this ends at the end of uh, 2023. Um, it does mean right now we have about 200 open pull requests, uh, instead of, we had about a baseline of 150 before that we were keeping steady, now we've got a baseline of 200. So um, <laughs> there's, there's some work to do with that. Um, we have some new review processes that have started to come in. So uh, the foundation now uses two review, should be using two reviewers for each pull request now. Um, so a reviewer that uh, looks at general coding issues, makes sure that everything fits with the coding standards, all that kind of stuff, and uses it as a kind of stepping ground to learn from the code. And then there's a subject matter expert that is the expert for that code area who also reviews it to make sure that it is actually properly functionally correct. Um, and then new features also now need to be signed off by a QA before they're actually merged in to the codes. And this is something that Sergey kind of helped design and we're trying to follow. So state of contributions for 2023. Uh, there was um, 31 contributors from the corporation, or PLC, I shouldn't have written PLC there, um, 8 from the foundation and 58 from uh, contributors outside of these two entities. So we have more contributors still outside of Marie than we have inside. But if you go by number of commits, the opposite story is true. It is fewer than 2022. Uh, Specifically, so this, uh, this uh, 58 number is a lot lower uh, than it was the year before. I think there are several factors behind that, but I have not dug into details for it. But the majority of the contributions still come from MariaDB PLC. And this is kind of the comparison of numbers. I hope it's visible, the fact that but, um, there's fewer kind of contributors between uh, 2022, 2023 for PLC, uh, and fewer commits, but uh, there's a lot of things that happened in PLC in that era, um, and I think the end result's going to end up with that. Um, as well, and we can see here, we've somehow lost 10 contributors in the last year, uh, therefore, um, outside of the MariaDB organizations, but the number of commits has gone up a little bit, so still got some valuable code coming in there. 
So some stats that may or may not be good. Uh, <laughs> pull requests merge without any public review whatsoever, 32 of them. Uh, this is a uh, pull request that I've had no comments on from anyone other than the person who opened it, and then that person that opened it merged the code. So um, it could be that these tickets were reviewed outside of GitHub, but we can't uh, monitor that. Yes. I, I just mainly that was a beer because I was talking to the developer, they were much faster. So exactly. Yeah. It still, it still happens. I do recommend, though, that someone had to comment saying that that happened. Because <laughs> uh, I'm that metric over here. Uh, average days to first meaningful response. Meaningful response is what I described earlier as a response which uh, came from one of the people who can merge code uh, that wasn't the original author. Um, so on average, it's taken 11.5 days to uh, get a response. Um, that number, I think, has been going down, but obviously this is an average of the entire year. Uh, total new pull requests for 2023 is 560, yes. It would be interesting to get the numbers from the second bullet, just for external contributors. That would be a good metric to get, the number of uh, days just for external contributions. I'm not sure how easy that would be, but I'd have to think about that. Okay, we can label PRs, with the, we usually label them either foundation or corporation. Actually, uh, there's even better way of doing it in so I can, I can I can do that. Uh, yep. I'll take that more. <laughs> something, for, something for next year's metrics chart. <laughs> so yeah, total PLs for the year, 566 pull requests. Obviously a lot of things happened outside of pull requests, but, um, and total closed and merged was 498. I said we've gone up from about 150 to about 200. That's the baseline, well that's about that kind of difference more or less. Uh, so there's still open PRs at the end of 2023, it was 191. Uh, so now it's around 200. Did we increase the rate at which we were closing for requests? Did we increase the rate of closing? Uh, I would say not really. <laughs> it, it's been, there were some spikes due to various activities. But, but compared to last year, like last last year? Uh, I don't think we increased it, no. Not significantly at least, not significantly enough. So you just need to work out? Yes. <laughs> I need to not work on things like catalogs and stuff. <laughs> so how to improve in 2024? Uh, we need more people to review pull requests, basically. Um, uh, it can't just be me and Daniel and a couple of others uh, for the community stuff. Um, and that's actually why we I searched for more sponsors to foundation to be able to have more people to do more work. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, something I didn't put down here as well is we do need uh, for Foundation a QA person because of the new process of getting feature for requesting require uh, QA. Uh, we have to, at the moment, rely on PLC resources for QA, which um, is not ideal. Um, and it means that, you know we don't want to be taking away their resources for that. Um, older pull requests need to be tackled. Uh, we have some really, really old ones. Um, they're in my report that um, we still are at start of the year and they're at the end of the year. And that's probably my fault. But I have been yes. looking into them. Uh, each one requires sometimes a day or so of work to throw through the entire history of what happened and why they got stuck and how to move them forward. Because usually they're not compatible with the current code base anyway at this point. Uh, the Who Touch project, which I talked about before, there's a lot of features that still need to be developed for that, um, and that will continue. And really, we need feedback on what you'd like to see over 2024, how we can improve the community contributions for you. And uh, that's all I have. Any questions? Uh, yeah. yeah, you said that the rate of closure hasn't really increased, but I'm looking at the stats now. It actually has increased quite a lot. Oh, is it? Like the last three months, we've got 59, 56, 63 flows. Yeah. Where from the previous year, some of the time was like 23, 20, 28. Yeah, so the, the number 
towards the end of the year, the close rate increased, but as well, the open rate also increased, so it's still kind of flatlined because of that. And what we want to see is the close rate increase, increase to a point where the total open actually goes down. And we have a few spikes of that happening throughout the year. Um, particularly, I spent, um, I forget when it was, but I think it was in the summer, I spent uh, two weeks solidly just working on some really stale pull requests, and it helped kind of dip it down a little bit. But with, when I had to move on to something else, it's suddenly started increasing again. So it, it, it's very difficult to get out of this kind of uh, situation. What happens when you work on stale pull requests? Do you get the input from the original author? Or, uh... So stale, stale pull requests, do I get input from the original author? Uh, sometimes. So it depends. A lot of the time, the original author has moved on to other things and, and doesn't really care anymore. But, so I have to evaluate whether it is something that we really want, something that's still relevant. Sometimes we've actually already done it in a different way, and the pull request is just going to let it go. Sometimes, uh, actually quite a few of them are Daniel Zolt ones from when he was at IBM, but now he works on the foundation, which puts us in a difficult situation there, um, where I, he basically can't redo them. So, um, for, well, but, I'd, I'd love having to figure out whether they can be redone in the new code base and reapplying them that way. Or um, there are some other ones where I've taken the concepts and rewritten it from scratch. Uh, there are some where I've been able to port the code. There are some where we've said just no. Um, but basically, for those, you, they end up being closed, not merged. Uh, most of them end up being closed, not merged, but linking to another pull request saying this has been moved to here. Uh, so uh, certainly the ones I've had to rebase or rewrite, it, it's always too messy to rebase within the same pull request. Uh, you talk about stuff that was written for 10.0 or whatever, you know, now you're trying to get it to 11. .0. Four, it's uh, you know a lot of the time it, you, you just can't rebase it easily. Uh, in which areas? I think that usually I, I have been able to go between five, six at least with no problem with rebase. Which areas in particular? Off the top of my head, I don't remember which one I, which ones I had to do because it was in the summer. CMake and System D is most likely. CMake. There was definitely a CMake one. <laughs> um, uh, there, there, I can, honestly can't remember now, but I do remember it, the source file I applied to uh, had moved um, and a few other things. Um, but that also, uh, I'm looking at how uh, you don't move source files that uh, that uh, part. Actually, I had a, somebody did merge uh, basically split the data files wrongly, so I got lots of conflicts because of that. But that was you tried to move one feature other outside, but then they also move a feature that was not related outside, and that caused the issue. So basically, moving things to other files is usually not a good idea. Uh, there are pros and cons. If we, if we were going to do that, I'd rather... We, we've talked before about the fact that we need to sometimes do code-based cleanups and uh, structure things in a way that's easier for new developers to pick up and, and work on. Uh, and that causes problems all the other questions, not really work. I would say, if you have something that you are 90% sure is nobody will touch it in earlier version, then it's okay because they will not be more Yeah. But if it's something that we'll, we will touch, then we have to be careful. Yeah. So it, it's always a difficult way. <laughs> As a chance you know, it's like something. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? All right, thank you very much, everyone.